In this specific episode, this dialogue and conversation between Viserys and Allison is super important for the future of this series. Because th this is where I believe he almost convinces Allison in a way that what Otto wants is likely what's best for the realm and she started she was because she was full team Rhaenyra you know Alicent was Rhaenyra's right. best friend and she was totally cool with it even after this she has a discussion with her dad and you know she's still on the fence about it so much but I think this is this is where it maybe it really entered her mind that shoot maybe maybe Viserys is reconsidering his position on certain decisions he's made. And I'll just say that for now, and I'll let you go through the dialogue. I picked her to protect the realm from Damon. She was my only child, the realm's delight. I named her out of love because I no longer believed. Believed what, my love? The series says, Many in my line have been dragon riders. Very few among us have been dreamers. What is the power of a dragon? The hour is too late, husband. The series when Rhaenyra was a child, I saw it in a dream. As vivid as these flames, I saw it. A male babe born to me, wearing the conqueror's crown. And I so wanted it to be true, to be a dreamer myself. I saw that vision again, night after night, but it never came again. I poured all my thought and will into it, and my obsession killed Rhaenyra's mother. I thought Rhaenyra was my way out of my abyss of grief and regret and naming her heir would begin to set things right. I never imagined I would remarry, that I would have a son. What if I was wrong? Because I told you we were going to talk about this when I mentioned it when you were going through the summary. With Viserys telling Rhaenyra she's not going to be supplanted, she's going to remain heir, and she will be the ruling queen when he dies. I think if he would have just... He had everyone in the realm there celebrating Aegon's second name bay. If he would have just reaffirmed that with the entire kingdom, it could have saved so much of what is, is to come in in sort of the uh, the back and forth and and you know deciding what's best for the realm. If he would have just took in center stage and been like, "Yo, we're really excited to hear that my firstborn son is you know turning two. We're really happy to you know, expand the family." But I'm just reiterating, that does not change things going forward. You guys all swore fealty to Rhaenyra. She is going to remain my heir, and she will be the ruling queen when I die. If he had just reaffirmed that with the entire realm that was there, celebrating Aegon's second name day, it would have saved a bunch of headaches and a bunch of problems going forward. Because at that point in time, they were all there expecting him to say, Oh, we're going to name Aegon heir. Aegon's going to be the heir. But instead, he, instead of taking one side or the other... What he did and just kind of ignored it and just assumed that everyone knew his wishes. If he would have just reaffirmed and said to the entire realm, No, this is still the plan. I know I have a son here. That changes nothing, though. My daughter is still going to be the ruling queen when I die. It would have saved everything. What do you think? I don't think it would have exactly saved everything. I think you still would have had people in the realm that probably would have brought it to question because you are, you know, you're definitely kind of making up your own rules here. I think some people in the realm would have still questioned it, but it would have made it a lot clearer so you wouldn't have any of this back and forth going forward. You would be, you know, especially with the core party here, like Allison and that sort of thing. The This goes into the fact of what I was saying is, this is my problem with him as king. This is the difference between him and Jaehaerys, which is why, you know, Jaehaerys, you know, for 60 years, they didn't have any problems because... It's almost like he tries to please people. Like he said today, you know, he he was, you know, he feels like he can, he always has someone he has to anger. It's not about pleasing people being king. I mean, then again, this day and age, we know, you know, we have a society that votes on things. But if he would just speak his mind about things, but instead, you know, this is where alcohol plays a role. Instead, he like buries his thoughts deep down because he doesn't feel like making someone angry and then goes and starts reminiscing on dreams and people believe what they want from that which goes into what we were saying in episode one uh damon straight up tells him you're weak 
<laughs> like a part of being a strong king isn't just being physically strong. You have to be strong with the people influencing you around you. And it, it seems like it, it, he couldn't almost handle himself. He could have simply said, you know, I appreciate your interest and this is different, but Rhaenyra will not be supplanted. And I'm going to make this clear. And that's all he had to say. But because you're doing a lot of this back and forth, damage control the next day well unfortunately because he can't make things clear you have a lot of back and forth and unfortunately episodes to come that we can't talk about that's part of the reason why because he never makes anything clear and i think it goes into exactly what uh damon says he's weak and that's his biggest problem that's my biggest problem with him being king and uh, unfortunately sometimes a weak king doesn't necessarily mean you're what's best in interest for the realm. You can have a spot on the council, but you might not be the best to actually rule. So that's just my thoughts on it. To be fair to Viserys, I mean, this doesn't really give away anything, but later on in the episodes, they refer to him as Viserys the Peaceful because he did live his entirety of his reign so far yeah. without any sort of problems that is right true. you know what i mean yeah. the the biggest problem that they had was this the issue in the step zones and they handled it so I even though you consider him weak he was really good at the pleasing of everyone to keep the realm intact and in order uh, yes he wasn't great at showing force most of the time or getting people to fear him that that wasn't really his mo so to speak he was just very adept at Try, he was he maneuvered the political side of ruling very well in my opinion you know he did his best to please everyone that where he could he because he i want to say he was a, i don't know if it was fear or he just refused to do it but he never really seemed to take a strong stance on a lot of things until he was absolutely forced to until so like, you know he was brought for like you know and and going into what we're going to talk about next week there's one line, and I'll, I'll say it now because it, it's fine, but Viserys and Damon talk, and he, this, Damon says, you, like, who cares what people think? You are the dragon. Your word is truth and law. Like, he's trying to get Viserys to realize, like, dude, just understand the power you have, man. Like, you know, yeah. and, and it just seems that uh, Viserys is, just sees himself as above petty things as a brute force and shows of strength. And then, you know, But sometimes that's the way to get, people, you know, people to respect you in a way it's so i'm gonna do this and i don't care what you think about it and, and if you've got a problem we'll do something about it and that's kind of damon's mentality like that's what, how damon views things but viserys it's very clear he doesn't he he's very much you know but he sits the fence on a lot of issues like he didn't want to fight in the step zones even though it was bad for the kingdom because they were ruining trade routes and they were really harming like house valarian because that was their their best like trade route and he didn't it took him Till Allison said, "Well, is the crab feeder surviving good for the realm, or is it better if he's destroyed?" You know, it just it, it, they he has to be given shown the real negative side of stuff before he finally makes a decision. He's very indecisive. That's what I'll say about King Viserys is he seems inde indecisive until he's pinned into a corner and needs to make a choice. And at that point, he is pretty good about being consistent. Um, you know, as we're going to see in the coming episodes of you know his the decisions he makes and you know, how he stands on those. But for the most part, when it comes to smaller little things, it just seems that he's very passive. 